Thank you so much for coming to tonight's Immovable Beast. Um, so this is the first Immovable Beast that's happening uh, under the new press that I'm starting called Sonar Sacred Life. And it's a poetry press that likes, wants to, I'd like for it to publish work that, innovative work that tends towards the poem. So it can be lots of different things, just sort of poetry. <laughs> so, um, so this is the, uh, so, this is the first one of the new series that we're starting. Um, it's going to happen on the third Friday of every month, but we're taking December off. So it's going to take place next month on November 18th. We're going to move it up to 7 p.m. because it gets cooler earlier now. Um, and next month we're going to be doing a, an event that's going to focus, going to be what we do here, but we're also going to focus on uh, independent presses, independent journals, and themes. So we have some interesting people that might be coming along and kind of in the works for that. So I'd like to take a moment to thank Steve I for letting us have this place as steel. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'm to uh, and to Lisa, who's not here tonight, um, for their generous donations and helping us uh, uh, be here tonight. Um, I also would like to thank the Center for Biological Diversity for the booze. So thank you to them, um, and also let you know that we're uh, we're uh, raising money to help keep these things going. So um, in the back, there's cakes, mug rugs, and fidgets for sale. If you'd like to buy one of those and help support us, also we have a GoFundMe, which you can see on the, one of the little quarter sheets that you were handed out in the beginning. Um, and so she's one of those, and you can get to our GoFundMe or just go to our website. SonorousAndGreat.com, and you have a little pop up. You can close if you want. Um, so, we have some interesting opportunities for poets and writers going on. Um, Lisa uh, Martin's uh, writing in place at Sabino Canyon is going on, and while she isn't here tonight to talk about it, um, it's really cool, and she's still looking for people for that. Also, um, there's lots of poetry going on in Tucson. Revolutionary Grounds has an open mic on the first Friday of the month at 5 p.m. Uh, the Spark Collective has a poetry night on Saturdays, uh, on Saturday, November 12th at 6 p.m. And I can show you these if you ever want to ask me about them too. Um, and Splinter Collective is interrupted by trains tomorrow at 8 at the Splinter Collective. And the POG reading series is this way. So you can go to pogartstucson.org and see some of their stuff. So, uh, thank you so much for being here, and David, would you like to? All right, well, what a pleasure to be here. Um, eat some poems and enjoy some poems with you all. <coughs> uh, my name is David Huntington. Um, I can say much more than that. Um, I am a writer, and I have some poems for you that I will just get into. There's uh, a slight sci-fi theme. Let's, let's see where it goes. <clears throat> the first poem. <clears throat> In Medius Reds. In movies we watch the windows blaze white. The spaceship has touched in our cornfield. My tall whiskey, a kettle rising 
your palm tree pajamas and portrait with our daughter on the mantle. I take down and marvel once more that we are ours. She hasn't spoken since the accident. And the aliens will change that. But first we must endure the plot. First we must see them. Will we see them with the power app from the dark house? You say, I told you we needed a dog. Was that something on the rooftop? What is moving? What is not? Your animal eyes beckon what will be tested in them. Yet we don't know how they will cure my uncertainty. Ease your aches. Return our daughter's voice. How will they appear? My brother is the sheriff disgraced racing forth to clear his name. He will not make it to the house. The aliens, too, will find what is real in him, extract it from his chest and remold him in its shape. Working in the milky light takes fewer limbs than you'd expect to enact change. You hold Nellie as she cries. The kettle trembles. Then, without touching it, we all watch my pen made of silver, alone on the marble, turn to the right. Keeping with the slightly sci-fi theme. A little louder. Oh, Jeff. Is it better when I'm closer? There you go. Sorry. Let's do this. Something our irradiated ashes might say. The scissors unraveled into sharp thread. My foot into a garland of beet red puree. All was radiant in the putrescent glow. For day, the ligaments of the sea were once mightily significant. It is ruinous to think. I am chemicals. Wrong. You are the figment of a miracle. Soup implies a membrane. No, we are gratuitous. For day, my penis has evaporated into a fine mist. Don't look, you can't, but that used to be wrong. It smarts, doesn't it, to be the noon? The sky keeps on peeling and peeling and peeling away. Silence. Ha, don't make me laugh, we'd scatter. It's a symphony to be severed. The violet will forever be outrageous as it sunders. For day. That's something our radiated ashes might say. The next poem here, I struggled for a long time to make these, the first couplet of this work. Like I had it and I went through like a dozen like drafts of different poems. But then uh, 2020 kind of gave it, it a shape and it, it kind of came into something. So uh, this, the title of this poem is Hodor or After Walter Benjamin. So about as disparate as references get, but you don't get them, you just try to be fun. <laughs> Hodor, or after Walter Benjamin. The present is doctorese for an apocalypse in small 
doses. I've begun to fuck with messianic time. I'm sipping coffee with a toe, holding the straight gate open, while the president prescribes a war on medicine. It's just doom in a teacup, I say as I wait in the white cafe, dead horses all about. Bernie Sanders, I say, which is to have a scratchy throat, potentially contagious. Hello, Dante. Hello, Hillary. Hello, C. The president is rubbing his small hands on my dying body, very vigorous, like a blessing. Up to my brim with past and future tears, I hold the door open and mist ekes out. Life means fragile balance. Have patience. A slow drip. But in the doldrums, yes, I do dream that through the gate might enter the bright talons of our screams to cut the throat of every master. But the coffee house is silent. The doctor says, rest, which means listen with fear. This coffee is nice. The straight gate remains open. I'm not bored. Here's another slightly narrative one. It has a backstory I want to tell you. It's called May the Smuggler. One day I simply awoke within an enemy. Even to crouch home was a crime. The trees pummeled the air. The merchant spoke in accusations. I gave an urchin boy my native coin. He said, only the emperor is permitted cartography. I said, I trespass not by will, but in the deeper will of sleep they took me. Wise men pray to the syndicate, he said. That's the word these days. Around this town, I wander the river, saddled by a bridge of whitish stone and righteous. The whole day and none crossed, though arched so pure and paramount. I feigned interest with cobbler, asked, must not there be some other road? But his foreign language only rang like intonations of my name. Were they on to me? But of course they were. The tall grass shone like mackerel. All the townsfolk's eyes were hidden from me. Night had fallen. An unwelcomed traveler is made into a prowler. Lapping moonlight from a puddle. I cursed the will who gave me so and envied the hearth-lit silhouettes. All men do not wake equal. The bridge was silent and wholly blue. I knew not to which land it crossed, only that I looked too like a villain here. And so I tried the crossing. Swiftly, then slowly, the old stone slabs were magnificent and true. It was then the river saw me, a stranger. Its currents coiled and waters arraigned, blindfolded and beaten, took. I was not righteous, they were not wrong. As the townsfolk wrote my sentence, I knew there had never been. We see green only when the snake wills it. 
They say, wise men pray to the syndicate. Now in my cell, that is all I do. Scratch dates in the clay, and as sleep descends, utter. May the smuggler steal me home. One last short poem, and it is a strange little poem, but I am fond of it. So, <clears throat> a snarl tomorrow. One can't be firm enough with cats. A rhizomatic rash on an empire. That's right. They've got a reason. Money meows at moon night. The dark capital of tower galls, growls, and jisms in gloom. All the while, varoom, varoom. A teensy fuckery in the grass. <laughs> Guys, hear me when I do this? Yes. Up, up, up. Um, unfortunately, we don't know how to turn it up. So, um, this is about as good as it gets. So, please just eat the microphone if you come in. Um, and so, Mary Rose. in my box, and my friend, uh, Lindsay Hill, always talked about the idea of a temporary text. He was a poet that's more turned into a fiction writer, but when he's reading or working on, on readings, he actually goes and he sort of takes his novel and like cuts it into pieces and then reads it at readings as the idea that, you know, it's true to the primary text, but also it's its own thing, but also it's ephemera, and I love ephemera. So, this is some copy of Cure Fraction. Cure Fraction. I live in the margins, soft and speaking, where wandering has me and the idea of true or not true, the idea of disappearance, or the idea of a country of ideas, or the country of ideas is a bomb, an invention, as idea, as an idea is, as idea are. As we are bred, who transforms the curve, throws up surface to fluxing? False analysis by manifesto, a stranger points at the cause, Interiors to exteriors, 
to strangers, to interiors, to exteriors, strangers, to interiors, to exteriors, strangers of interiors, of exteriors, strangers, to strangers, of exterior, interior, to strangers, of exteriors, to interiors, of strangers, of interiors, to exteriors, to strangers, to interiors, to exteriors, to strangers, spoken wrongs. I held my face to the surface and my arms rioted into the nature of the sentence. Should they help me or shouldn't they help me? No, no. I'm actually asking for not help because. Yeah, David is here if I need help, but that doesn't mean I want the help that he's so totally offering me because help is complicated. David's help is not complicated. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read a few of my poems real quick. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh. All right. Um, so this is from a book that was published earlier this year. Um, called uh, In Memoriam and In Inquiry. If you want one, just talk to me. Um, I am not a real poet. All poetry lies. It lies about. But some lies reveal rather than conceal. I is a liar, but to lie towards, not to. A good poet is a poor liar. I has rarely known peace. My atom seems determined to split. To thine own self be true. Which one? I have as many eyes as eyes in the, as stars in the sky. To be an angel is strange work. Silence. A void. A maw. A consummation. Sublet of another word, by another, an other, radiogenic confection made yarn, vacant home in space, a mere place. I've tried to love this ever new, to exhume the dim evermore. I desire a fall to ponder the rat beside. A cockeo earl sings homely to the glob of clay, then takes an auger to this pleated gray. So I water my eyes, for this breathing never ceases, and this bill I always swallow, and ear never blinks. Could I cease only for a moment? I wish to live knowing silence. I wish sleep without a dream, holding a small piece of nada or papa or nana. Horologic swear of hands. Alfie, do you suffer dreams? Sapient toilets and fetish automata, nylon computers and drill powered centaurs. How does one FedEx a cetacean or teach Siri registered sign to flirt? Zuckerberg scrolls among VR press unnoticed. I kind of have a burning hatred of Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> so, um, I, I like one of those people, sorry. <laughs> so, today I watched a stone. I watched the pebble's edge move from one pebble to the next. As each pebble went umber, it, turned, it seemed to move a little closer to myself. Can glassware be suicidal? My rug seems to remember me, if only for a moment. A page printed by feet. What are words but mountains within a page, mountains in a desert, an interruption of living? Interrupt living with me? Without interruption, how can we tell living from dying? Thank you. And Kintaro. You can start over here. Hello. <clears throat> can you hear me? <laughs> um, my name is Ken Carroll Carter. Uh, this is my first poetry meeting. First time I'm sharing sure, sure my. Sure. 
Um, these are. Uh, I have a um, curated collection of poems titled uh, Turquoise Dip and Topaz. And it's just a bunch of poems that I've written that I haven't really um, titled individually, or I don't know how I'm going to share share. <clears throat> but um, Turquoise Dip and Topaz. My faith is on fire when I remember the beginning that was water. I was taught that the sky is masculine and the earth is feminine. Time brought these two together, so I stand by my mother. We have much to say, but the sky will not let us speak. There is only our breathing and the waves now. My mother stares toward the ocean like her mother is standing in front of her. I can't tell if she's mourning or happy to see the ocean for the first time. I take off my shoes and say, let's get closer, Mom. She takes one step forward, afraid, and then stops. She just cries. This is as close as I'll get. I think she's talking to her mother, or God. I don't know, but I run forward to the beginning. At midnight, I stand small in the middle of the road and stare into the sky, looking for the river my mother sings about. No one is awake but the mother who just had a litter of puppies. She watches. I rub my eyes like a puppy opening theirs for the first time, searching for a mother's voice. I stand with asphalt between my toes, holding on to her, and the church has a harvest with roots and ruins, souls trying to remember water. A river rushes parallel with time, carrying lead toward a prayer. River Jordan, my mother seems to be. My mother stands far from the edge, but close enough to watch the sun and her son dance in the water. I dance. She's praying like my grandmother over her garden. If I could hear a goat, I would say I'm home. I know she wants her kids to live a long life, so she's asking. Her hair and the salt air tell me to be still in the summer. My mother is still staring into heaven, so I let her. I see it now too, the sky is the color of gray. Doves wrapped in a quiet evening. When a memory finds me, I am swept into the gray. Today, the clouds gift memory. Somewhere else, there are two lovers with a pair of binoculars. They're well watching. The ocean is bright gray, and then a tail from gray. Memory is swept away. Moonlight leaves on Earth's Skin, water trickles out of rock, and blood abandons the heart. God dipped turquoise and topaz, dipped my skin red and my heart cold ash. <clears throat> so that was my first curated question. <laughs> um, these next two poems are just uh, standalone poems. Um, the first one is, or this one's kind of weird, but I really like it. It's titled Cloud Hunter. Sleep paralysis is tension screaming quietly. I was dreaming, but I'm still dreaming as I try to wake up. Georgia O'Keeffe has caused so much grief. Sky above clouds has Priscilla Presley dancing. The pelvis has an opening as wide as one of Jupiter's moons. The sun is the center high above the desert, and his light opens wide like the spread of a man's legs. Blood remains blood, skin remains skin gone. A lizard lost the tail in New Mexico and then preys in Arizona. The body is in purgatory. <clears throat> that was Cloud Hunter. <laughs> This next poem, my last poem that I'm sharing, is titled uh, Water. And this one was also my first published poem. It was published in, the, in Pima's, um, Pima College's Literary Magazine, Sanskrit. Uh, this one is titled Water. <clears throat> Water. Your mother carried me through new moon and full moon, creating craters. Here you are out of your mother's crater moon. 
Your mother birthed you along a stream, creating a river. Here you are, raging and choking in your mother's quivering rain. Your mother shed tears six generations deep. You set up creating pain. Here you are, drinking recycled rain from your mother's soil tears. Your mother suffered the loss of blood fed by the river, creating a sea. Here you are, drowning in the blood of your mother's thick blood. I'll just restart that one. Water. Your mother carried you through new moon and full moon, creating craters. Here you are out of your mother's crater pool. Your mother birthed you along a stream, creating a river. Here you are raging and choking in your mother's quick rings. Rain. Your mother sheds tears six generations deep, you creating seven, creating pain. Here you are drinking recycled rain from your mother's soil tears. Your mother suffered the loss of blood fed by the river, creating a sea. Here you are drowning in a flood of your mother's thick blood. Your mother drank from the nearby pond, birthed by the earth, creating you. Here you are bathing in black oil. Your mother buried by the earth, now shallow with no ocean. Here you are, no sea, no pond, no tears, creating nothing. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Kentaro. And now, uh, Christina. So I'm pretty deaf. Can you hear me all right? Because yeah. I haven't heard much. Oh, I can't. <laughs> this 
this is uh, this is called Boomer. My grown son, teasing, thanks me for the anxiety he inherited. He says, okay, Boomer, when I refuse to use the gender neutral singular they. Now he emails, hey dad, self-explore your place in the world, read me in white supremacy. What the fuck? Didn't I march on Birmingham with Dr. King? Didn't I triage those students at Kent State? Didn't I chain myself to that smokestack in Alberta? Well, no, I didn't, but I was there in spirit. Joking, Randy Newman recalls Bruce Springsteen telling him, Rand, I'm tired. How would you like to be the boss for a while? I swear I never told my son, Evan, I'm tired of being angry. How would you like to be angry for a while? Red Letter Day. In the audiologist's waiting room, I read an article about a detectorist, a Welsh school custodian whose metal detector signaled a Viking treasure hoard. Mercian hack silver, decorative sword fittings, a gold arm bangle shaped like the Earl of Boros, and hundreds and hundreds of brittle silver coins worth millions, what I'd call a real red letter day. Later, I got to tell that joke about my second, my second favorite organ pointing to my brain, and the audiologist laughed. She laughed, and I, I squirmed with infantile joy. This will be one of the, I have a new manuscript, a book coming out in early uh, February. This will be one of the poems. Yes to now, hands at 10 and two, late miles on Bluetooth, I'm driving north where once it rained, where I rode my old gelding around the reservation, visiting the hogans of my friends. We drink coffee and laugh at my little orange horse, his cow hawks, his blazed face, and nasty disposition. I'm driving north, yes, listening to Miles play yesternow and searching for the red-tailed hawk that's followed me for days. This is uh, my, my yoga teacher's here tonight, Frank, so uh, happy birthday, Frank. And I, I've learned quite a bit from him, so I'll dedicate this poem to him. It's uh, Pratapika. The yoga must be working. I haven't wanted to punch anyone in the mouth for weeks. Still, during Savasana, my monkey mind leaps around, regretting this and that, regretting high school, wishing I'd kicked her ass out of bed when my steady confessed she'd fuck the school bad boy. Um, um, um. <laughs> I've copied this passage from Swami Swatamarama's Hatha Yoga Pradipika and taped it to the bathroom mirror. When the Rudra Granthi is pierced, prana enters the seat of the Lord, the space between the eyebrows, spontaneously producing ecstasy, vanquishing old age, disease, hunger, and sleep the yogi becomes wise like a god. Ecstasy, wisdom, I wouldn't know. I do know this, there's no such thing as balance, only balance in me. When my mother was 77, she fell in love again. She invited the object of her affections, an elderly man she met in church, to a party at my big sister's house. He arrived with another man, 
both wearing identical powder blue cashmere sweaters. My sister, whose gaydar is sensitive as a Geiger counter, raised her eyebrows at me. I shrugged back. Now, dear listener, don't expect me to mention toxic masculinity, how my father, modeling a man's proper relationship to nature, forced my six-year-old son to shoot a desert cottontail with a pellet gun, how my father brooded for three days in a darkened room because someone told him I was a homosexual. No, no expectations, yours or those of my widowed mother, as she flirted innocent as a zygote, trying to hold hands with this diffident man who, beneath the kitchen counter, pressed his leg against the leg of the one he came with. Shall I go on? I got a couple yeah. more. <laughs> Bad news, good news. Breaking news. Every 45 seconds a vehicle is stolen in the United States. A statistic I heard citizens of countries like Burundi or Somalia envy. Hell features a room where someone's in-laws show slides of their visit to Mall of America. Heaven features the same exact room. Bulldozer. At the Born Again Christian Meditation Center, the adepts don't focus on their breath, but on their own particular version of Christ, believing on the cross, blonde and blue-eyed as Robert Redford, getting a pedicure at Mary Magdalene's nail salon, washing his robes three times at the laundromat to get the fish stick out. True or false? The Bible declares eating shellfish and enjoying same-sex sex equally sinful. The sinners of depths don't know or care. They're utterly certain their faith, like a nuclear-powered bulldozer, moves mountains. Last one, shotgun. The last time I felt good, taking out the garbage, I wobbled against our car, bumping the side view mirror, which sagged, sounded like a broken wind chime. When I asked the service rep how much to fix it, with a straight face, he replied $650. I bet he'd never before had an elderly gentleman shout, are you fucking nuts? and lay rubber as he vacated the premises. I felt good. My hearing's gone, my eyesight's going, as if my body wants to say farewell before I'm ready. Getting old's a bore, hearing or writing about it even worse. Ask Hemingway, who ate his shotgun as if growing old doesn't beat the alternative. Sometimes I feel like a family dollar store in a dying strip mall. But why dwell on it? Oh, look, a roadrunner. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jefferson. And thank you all for suffering through the sort of tail of the microphone. Um, well, thank you. Um, thank you, Jefferson. And now, uh, Heidi.
fun. I guess uh, I read this mostly um, before the 2020 election, but it's still pertinent because people keep dying of COVID. Um, and they're still dead, the ones who died. So um, this is about that. What we don't count. One, the cats without laps. Two, the throwers without catchers. Three, the songs without singers. Four, the birds without watchers. Five, the movies without goers. Six, the jobs without workers. Seven, the seats without passengers. Eight, the candles without blowers. Nine, the jokes without tellers. Ten, the meals without eaters. Eleven, the lips without kisses. Twelve, the babies without grandparents. Thirteen, the troubles without troubleshooters. Fourteen, <clears throat> the peace without makers. Fifteen, the ballots without voters. Well, thank you, Heidi and uh, John. Hi, everyone. I'm definitely more of poet T than poet. <laughs> poet T. But I'm uh, going to just speak into the microphone and do other things into the microphone. Um, usually there's lots of equipment around me and other things, so this is new. So thanks, David. Thanks, Mary Rose, for giving me the opportunity. So we'll start from the beginning. So, Susan Howe, echoing Joseph Boys, says, oh, this is great. Every mark on the page is an acoustic mark. I can't 
but it's hard to hear. So God must. Oh, you, me, and oh, ak, ah, marin, vo, in our, n, the, mert, too much, sm, the, sniff, or you, I burn, you'll eat silk, but, dna, as it n n a a l l g n go go and n d d t a go 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 o n o y l m w a a k i u b Oh, I know it's a bit here. Ah, ah, this time, but B can't be come away. Stop, go, go, wire, go, yes, go, yay, the end. One in one books of go. The one in the zinc in a of books go in at a bit on earn has not the in as we are in guy give this of the you go of. Go ood is v Sing again. I'll keep one out full lear can g av and to end e for n back ah if e in b ma b ills will z and reduce so da in so, so there's, there's some poems from uh, a chapbook that is coming out with an album with Unsilent Desert Press in the spring. Um, wanted to let everyone know if you want the full amplified version of that. <laughs> I'm going to be performing on November 9th at a place called Golden Saguaro on 6th Street, right across from the high school football field. Um, and if you're interested in some more weird sounds, please be in touch with me. Um, yeah, November 9th, Wednesday, November 9th. Did I say that? Yeah. Bless you. I was always going to be right up on the mic, so could have been that bad one too. But this is extra loud. I love it. But I am going to read some words. Okay. <clears throat> Oysters generally are a very environmentally friendly source of protein, says Richardson. There's just not really a downside. Oysters genuinely are a very environmentally friendly source of protein, says Richardson. There's just not really a downside. Did you have to do this? I was thinking that you could be trusted. Did you have to ruin what was shiny? Now it's all. On subsequent discs, Dahl has wandered through a series of non-human perspectives. Most memorable, perhaps, is the grisly Colombian demon El Borraro, who crept into 2018's anticlines. Quote, this figure basically turns your body into goop 
and takes it out from the skull and then blows air into you. And I started to think about the subject that is only skin, but that you can possess from within and feel all that, all that she breaks off laughing. It's an excessive erotic desire to connect with someone basically, a way to describe the most extreme form of love one can experience, trying to possess the other from within. One baby to another says I'm lucky to met you. I don't care what you think unless it is about me. <sighs> Judith Molina from The Enormous Despair, A Diary of 1968. She says, when I die in the plague, a woman sobs over my body, dropping hot tears on my sweaty face. In the great media and in the cellar of the poor church, they are talking about the revolution. Some of them know what they mean when they say it, and most of them don't. While the ads, their antennae out for new jargon, cry, revolution! In cars, cosmetics, clothes, and blazing psychedelic colors, they proclaim the far out freedom in refrigerators and finery and furs. And we're balancing life against death. Everybody's telling the whole truth. Even the lies carefully formed and labeled, this is a lie, tell the truth. Nobody's fooled, but everybody's afraid. Wanted me to lie, wanted me to cry, wanted me to die. Wanted me to lie, wanted me to cry, wanted me to die. Say what you will, we all die with our hearts in our hands and a body above all. You'll see me again when the air is clear. You'll see my face when you touch what is there and I'll sing sing again and I'll sing I'll sing again don't jump off that building my friend the way and the doom it all comes again say what you will we all die alone in a flower world stone and cold sing sing again yes i'll sing i'll sing again That is it. Thank you so much for coming. Um, please get something to eat, something to drink. Please eat and drink. We have too much to take home. Um, and we'll see you next time at, on November 18th. Uh, thank you so much.